Learn the answers to your neuroplasticity questions and use those answers to improve your professional results and your own body and life. Find out how to turn on the nucleus bacillus for lasting brain map changes. Hijack the amygdala for a left shift into resilience. Upgrade motor patterns using the quantum Zeno effect. Increase the insula's cortical real estate for an immune system boost and thicken the von economos to expand your seat of consciousness. All of this by changing how your touch interacts with your patient's nervous system, influencing biomechanics and information integration. For hundreds of years, the brain was thought of as a static organ, relatively immutable after a critical learning period during early childhood. If through nature or nurture you didn't get it early on, you just didn't get it. And if you did get it, but later in life, trauma or repetitive strain disconnected your learning, you were out of luck. But neuroscientists like Paul Bakarita and Michael Merzenich have overturned this belief and we now understand the brain remains plastic from cradle to grave. It is opportunistic and it has an appetite. Paying close attention to important, surprising, novel information stimulates the gatekeeper of that early critical learning period, the nucleus bacillus, for relearning and new learning. This need to learn something different is what actually drives people to your clinic every day. They may come with a prescription, but what they need is to learn how to do something new, stroke or stress fracture, pelvic floor dysfunction, or pulled groin muscle. Healing is learning something new, and learning is not simply repetition. Merzenich's experimental monkeys showed no lasting brain map changes if they rotely repeated a task, like some home exercise programs. In order to get stable brain map changes, the monkeys had to be paying close attention to a novel set of information. You can learn how to catch and hold the human brain's attention using the quantum Zeno effect. That's paying close attention to the novel, which must happen to get Hebb's law in motion, neurons that fire together, wire together, which is neuroplasticity. In the early 1980s, before neuroplasticity was a neuroscience buzzword, Merzenich was in Northern California, solidifying the theory, while Harriet Goslins, founder of CFR, Cortical Field Reeducation, was in Southern California, already putting those unexplained theories into practice with extraordinary lasting results. Since that time, she has conducted two four-year professional trainings in this remarkable modality. Here's Goslin's putting neuroplasticity into layman's terms in the early 1980s. Our brain learned incredible amounts of abilities very fast as a child, and there's a certain way that the brain is programmed to learn. And if you deal with the brain in that way, you can reprogram some quite incredible things. This woman had suffered a massive MVA brain injury and 21-day coma. She had been discharged after 10 months by her PT as having reached maximal potential before seeing Goslin's. One in one half hours after receiving CFR, she no longer needs her cane and her kick out is almost absent. Two months later, she has, as an observer said, gotten her youth back. According to Goslin's, real change does not come from layering new instructions on top of old ones. First, compensations need to be unlearned and neutralized. Then new movement possibilities can be truly accepted and utilized by the nervous system. CFR extinguishes old or default circuitry, retooling and upgrading skills in motor planning and execution for function, in recovery from strokes to sporting injuries. CFR is a global approach. Movement is not dependent upon muscles. It is dependent on the real core of any human, the nervous system using neuroplasticity, outrageously clean biomechanics, and lots of curiosity, CFR can improve the capacity to return not only what has been lost, but what was never thought possible. Paying close attention requires a sophisticated sensory system, and we have two. The first you will remember is the dorsal column medial lemiscus tract, registering conscious proprioception, vibration, tactile touch, and form recognition. It comes from the periphery up the ipsilateral side of the spinal column, crosses at the medulla, projects to the thalamus, and onto the sensory motor cortex. It's a great track. Merzenich's monkeys used it, PTs use it, and CFR uses it. 
and there's a bigger piece. The second tract, the spinal thalamic tract, in the past has been considered fibers that were narrowly viewed as nociception, temperature changes, and crude touch. They come in through the dorsal horn, cross at the level of the spinal cord, run contralateral up to the medulla, project to the thalamus and onto the sensory motor cortex, but we are now finding that these fibers also project to the insula and the cingulate cortex, which the literature is calling our seat of consciousness. Newer research has shown that these fibers are the homeostatic afferents, which guide the goal-directed, autonomic, neuroendocrine, and behavioral activity. That's the musculoskeletal system. In other words, these fibers running with the vagus nerve, which we'll explore more in the seminar, are the very tracks that contribute to our self-awareness, how we experience and react to our lives, what we move towards and away from using our musculoskeletal system, and the intention with which we do it. When we pay close attention, on purpose, in the present, without judgment, and this is called mindfulness, just like Mers and Itch's monkeys, we get neuroplastic changes in our sensory motor cortex, but we also get neuroplastic changes in our insula. The insula is activated and its cortical real estate expanded with mindful meditation. Now, meditation is just a word that means paying attention on purpose in the present without judgment. It is not necessarily attached to a religious experience, and we will show you how to use mindfulness in a completely scientific and embodied way. Through neuroplasticity, when activated regularly, we increase the number of neurons, their interconnectedness, their speed, their cortical thickness. This means every function of the insula is boosted. And you know what the insula does? Everything, nearly every mental or physical experience is affected by the insula along with the anterior cingulate cortex through special neurons called von economos that are only present in human and higher primates like the great ape, whales, and elephants. These neurons are involved with being conscious of self. These two cortexes, the insulate and the cingulate, run the emotional salience network, a network that drives emotions like empathy, trust, guilt, embarrassment, love, error detection, sense of humor, risk-taking, and very importantly, the awareness of the present. And CFR encourages a left shift in the frontal lobes that redirects the immune system towards systemic, robust wellness. That left shift is called the neurosignature of resilience. What if, instead of training the monkey, we could unleash the human? What if, for all your time and treasure, you got not just physical changes, your patients don't just leave with better function, but with a new life? I'm Katherine Meyer. I am a psychiatrist, also trained as a psychoanalyst. And I came to CFR, CFR not really knowing anything about it. The immediate experience is a physical one. You're on the floor, you're doing um, very specific, minutely calibrated lessons. But what especially appealed to me about the work, I think, was that it, it incorporates, it integrates not just the physical, but the emotional, the psychological, and the spiritual. Hello, my name is June Engo. I'm a doctor of medicine. Um, I've been a family practice doctor actually for well over 25 years now, and I'm a graduate of Stanford Medical School. I think the biggest thing I got out of it was that it felt like life didn't have to be so heavy. Are you being held hostage by the myth that old age is inevitable? Are you suffering from old sports injuries, repetitive overuse of your hands and shoulders, back symptoms from patient transfers and manual therapy? Well, who do you go to when nothing else works? I would tell them if at all possible to go, that regardless of what's bothering them or what they think is bothering them or even if they're feeling pretty okay, that 
it will be a really life changing thing for them in many ways that's hard to predict, that no one can predict until you go through it. CFR is for the practitioner as well as the patient. You will travel the road before you bring others down the path. And in that journey, you will find physical and emotional healing, even if you think you're pretty okay. That will be easily and confidently shared with your patients. These changes will be available to you personally in our time together and will begin to color how you practice physical therapy. It's very hard work to describe, but it's so experiential. CFR seminars are small. Close mentorship and direct access is essential for learning these concepts. For more information on upcoming Destination California CEU certified seminars, check out our brochure. Come join us. The brain is the best frontier.